evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My name is Catherine Murray, and I'm your host for this evening. Um, this is the 10th annual Spry Memorial Lecture, uh, a public <coughs> lecture series which continually engages leading public intellectuals in the challenge of thinking about the public good in communication. So welcome tonight. In deference to the occasion of Remembrance Day tomorrow, I would like to begin by a quote from Dr. Eleanor Stebner, the J.S. Woodsworth Chair in Humanities at Simon Fraser University. In her ceremonial address at noon today, she stated a deceptively simple thing. Memory, she said, is not a passive event. To remember is to recollect. To recollect war kills beauty, art, and the spirit. To remember is to resist, she says, to restrict, to resist the idea that war creates peace and democracy, for the paradox is it cannot. To remember is also to reconcile, to reconcile different conceptions of our past, our present, and our future. Our communication media in Canada are also central in making memory. Our public broadcasting tradition in this country has played an important, albeit democratically contested role in all of these active elements of remembering, which Dr. Stebner cites, central to our recollection, our resistance, and our reconciliation. The lecture tonight, and I suspect the reason it has attracted you, is entitled Making Media. And I welcome our esteemed guest, Dr. Mark Ravoy from the University of McGill. It is fitting that this event coincides with the occasion of Simon Fraser University's 40th anniversary celebration. And it also coincides with the 10th anniversary of the Spry Lecture Series. This memorial lecture series was created in 1996 by an endowment from the friends and the family of the late Graham Spry. Graham Spry, together with Alan Plant, was one of the pioneer figures of Canadian public broadcasting. The Spry family represents the richest of the Fabian tradition of public cultural activists in this country. Irene Spry was one of Canada's leading economic historians. Graham Spry was secretary to the Association of Canadian Clubs at a period of extraordinary cultural outpouring across Canada. And he was also co-founder of the Canadian Radio League, which, as you know, was successful in pressing Premier Bennett at the time to pass an all-party resolution in favor of the creation of what was uh, what we now call the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. It was his son, the filmmaker Robin Spry, who set up the Spry Foundation to carry on his father's ideas. Unfortunately, Robin died tragically and prematurely in a car accident in icy Montreal last winter. But his extraordinary legacy to Canadian cinematography lives on. Together with the remaining second and third generation members of the Spry family, SFU offers the Spry series in partnership with the University of Montreal every year. From the very beginning, these lectures, offered simultaneously at the two universities, have been extraordinarily popular, attracting over the decade over 2,000 people in a continuing kind of relationship over the years, and contributing to a growing website of really remarkable papers for the Spry archives. Past speakers have included our very own Daryl Duke, Zacharias Kunick, and an array of others, uh, like Graham Murdoch or uh, Ruth Pierre Thomas Selig. We are grateful to the Spry family for this opportunity to build such a significant collection, and we are indebted to Dr. Brian Lewis, who I know is with us today, uh, Dean of Applied Sciences at Simon Fraser University, and of course, Mark Raboy, who together were the first champions of the initiative for such a series, um, and we are delighted that they were able to uh, uh, begin it and found it. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the superb support of the Office of the President of Simon Fraser University, Mr. Michael Stevenson, and the Dean, again, Mr. Brian Lewis, and of course the School of Communications very own director, Dr. Martin Lava, who I just 
momentarily lost visually, who's at the back waving, for their financial support and emotional support and administrative support throughout the year. In particular, we also have to thank the Office of the President, who allocated us extra money this year, thanks to Mrs. Moyna Gick, to invite you all to join us for a celebration of the 10th, 10th lecture and an informal uh, 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 reception which will take place after so the conversation may continue. That will be in the Czech Gallery, which is overlooking the beautiful sea bus terminal out that door at the end of the discussion. <laughs> Finally, no event would be complete without the help of Sue Jameson McLaren, who I know is in and out looking after. Uh, she is the Director of Public Relations at Harbor Center, who handles our national publicity, and also the help of our communications photographer. Heiko Dacosis, who's working over there, uh, under the direction of Chris Jaselnik, who I just lost there, he is over there. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the volunteer grad students who so graciously welcomed you, Florence Chi and uh, Shanti McFronten. However, without the passion and superb event management of Denise Zenner, who's sitting over here, secretary to the director of the School of Communication, we would not be here today, and we would not be building such a tremendous legacy over the past 10 years. So, Mark, do not give up. I'm now at your introduction. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mark Raboy, who will be talking to us about creating the conditions for communication in the public good. Such simple, deceptively simple words. Dr. Raboy is full professor and Beaver Book Chair in Ethics, Media, and Communications in the Department of Art History and Communication Studies at the University of McGill. A former journalist, he has authored and edited 13 books and more than 100 journal articles or book chapters, as well as reports for such organizations as UNESCO, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation, the European Broadcasting Union, and the Policy Research Secretariat of the Government of Canada. He is probably best known amongst those of us who study at the School of Communication for his canonical work on public broadcasting entitled Missed Opportunities, which has actually educated an entire generation of our undergraduate students. His most recent book, and probably equally provocative, although I haven't yet had an opportunity to read it, is on the World Summit of the Information Society, the UN Working Group, which is addressing the growing gap between the information rich and information poor and the interrelationship between social policy and communication policy in any country. Uh, Dr. Raboy has many, many, many uh, accolades before him. Uh, I will just share with you one, and that is that our president, Dr. Michael Stevenson, when I, was unable to be with us tonight, and sends his regrets and hopes you enjoy the reception. At the same time, he did identify that we tend to attract some very interesting speakers and scholars to the program. Dr. Raboy is a senior research associate with the program on comparative media law and policy at the University of Oxford. And uh, perhaps most interestingly, for those of us who work in the trenches of trying to influence change in the policy environment and communications, from 2001 to 2003, he served as expert advisor to the House of Commons Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage for the Honorable Clifford Lincoln and his excellent study of Canadian broadcasting, which was entitled Our Cultural Sovereignty. He is also a founding member of an international advocacy campaign on communications rights for the Information Society. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Raboy, who will talk to us tonight about our collective role in making media. 